So glad to be back. I was gone for almost, I think, two weeks. And, and what I, what me and Lisa went to, we went to a church. It was for a conference uh, last week, for a whole week. And we were, pro we were probably in two, four, six, eight, like 10 services in, in four days or something like eight days, something like that. It was, not, it was five days, that's how it was, but we're like in 10 services. And, and the services were right around three and a half hours each. It was from nine to 1.30 in the morning, and then we'd come back from seven to right around 10.30 at night or 6.30. And they're, they're what you call a revival church. And what I mean by that is they're like an upper room church where you go and you get the fire and then you bring it somewhere. And they have a big assignment. And what was interesting to me is that when we name Wednesday nights, it's kept the name Wednesday Night Revival. That's the name of the service. We didn't just come up with it. It's been the name of the service. And when you think about revival, what is revival? It's only this, so don't get freaked out about it. It's nothing weird, it's simple, this. The goal of a revival is this, the presence of God. The goal of the revi a revival is the presence of God. So when, when, when you're saying Wednesday night revival, we're saying is we have a service that our goal is the presence of God. It's, now why is the presence of God so important? Because people don't need religion. They need an encounter. You, you don't need to, to have another church service that you're practicing some type of rituals. You need an encounter with God. You need, to, you need a victory. You need, a, you need, come on, you need to, a touch of God for your real problems. Come on, how many know we, we serve a real God that can handle our real problems? Now, pursuit of God. Now, when I, when I think about revival, this is, this is my definition when it's all said and done. It's the presence, it's a transforming presence of God. What is it? Transforming presence of God. This is what I mean by that is the purpose of the power and the purpose of the presence is to transform lives. What's the purpose to what? So this is the idea. We worship the way we worship to create an atmosphere where God is welcome. And, and tonight, what I want to do is I'm going to teach you how to create the atmosphere where God is welcome, but I'm also going to teach you how to fight in the spiritual realm. And the reason I want to teach you how to fight, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to give you one weapon, one weapon tonight on how to fight spiritually so you can start getting some victories in your life. And tonight, what we're going to be talking about is a simple subject, and this is the title of the message tonight. Get your shout back. Come on. Get your shout back. Come on, let's get one shout to God. Come on, we're going to war tonight. Come on, we're going to war for tonight. Come on, let the devil know. Come on, there's an army right here. Come on, we're fighting for something. Someone's gonna get set free tonight. Someone's gonna get delivered tonight. Someone's gonna get healed tonight. Come on, let's get our shout back. Now, 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 now. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to talk to you. Get, get the, get the thing over here. Whatever that thing is right there. But I want to train you how to do warfare because I, I know this you know how to shout you just did it but I want you to live a life at this level you know what we need right now a shout back in your house not arguing we need a shout of come on we need a shout of prayer in your house a shout of praise in your house a shout of victory in your house come on we we, I, want, I want you to get to know this. Our houses are, I want you to get this. If your house 
has no spiritual resistance, demons can come in. Demons could care less that you came to church today. They just want to make sure you don't take it home. I seen this concert this week in Houston. Eight people dead trampled to death. And they didn't stop their worship to Satan. They kept the concert going. There was, there was a young man that went from this church. He shouldn't have been there, but he went anyways. He's a new believer. He's, we're working with him right now. He just barely got saved. But he went. And he said, he said this, in the, in the toilets, there was 666 written on every single toilet there. People are dying for their worship to Satan. And right now, I'm gonna, I want you to, there's a lot of craziness happening in this world. A lot of depression, a lot of suicide, a lot of addiction. We're in real warfare. And the only group on earth that could challenge the devil is an on fire church. Come on, not a dead church. Come on, but an on fire, come on, on fire church. That it's a lifestyle. Give God one more access to your life. War! Now, you gotta, you, this is, stop playing. And start fighting. Because if you're not, you could be playing all day long, playing church. You could do that all you want, but this is the problem. The devil ain't playing. There's real bullets. There's real death. There's real destruction. There's real recruiting. Come on. The devil's recruiting our children. And we got to say, not in our house anymore. This house will be taken over by the presence of God. Now, I'm talking to believers here. And, and don't freak out if you just brought somebody. It's, oh my gosh, what are they going to think about this craziness? I guarantee you this. They're at least not bored. They're like, you guys are tripping. Like, what, are you guys one of those holy rollers or something? What is this? Yes, we are. Come on. We believe in the presence and the power of God. You don't need a dead church. You need an encounter with God. Okay. Someone says, I want you to get this. This is our identity. We fight. I'm not scared of no devil. I don't bow to no threats. I'm not freaked out about my future because I know my God. Come on now. I, I, I remember the first night, the first night of the revival. Uh, it was a Wednesday night service. We get out. I was hungry because I didn't eat all day. And the only thing that was open around 9 30, 10 was Chick fil A right before the closing. So we went Chick fil A. But we were like a half hour away from our, from our, from our, from our hotel. And I know this, Chick-fil-A don't taste good cold. I mean, it gets soggy. You don't, I want crispy chicken. So I told Lisa, we can't drive home with the crispy. I mean, we got crispy chicken. It's going to be soggy Christian, not Christian, soggy chicken. We got some soggy Christians too. You need to refresh yourself. Get some crispiness in you, right? Get some crisp to your, to your praise. Uh, the whole message, let's change it. Be a crispy Christian. I was kidding. <laughs> all right, so, so now, <laughs> all right, so, so um, I, I come out of, I come out of that, the service the first night, and I'm now, I park in the first parking lot I find. I don't know, I'm parking in the hood. That's perfect for me. So as soon as I park my car, I go, Lisa, give me my crispy chicken. She gives me the chicken. And as soon as I get the chicken, some guy knocks on my window. For some people, that freak them out. Not for me. And I'll tell you why it's not for me. Because I know who my God is. Come on, I got the authority. I got power. He's, he's, he's like, 
His eyes are like wide open. He was already a little zombified. Whatever he was on, it was, it was working for him at that moment. So I got out. I got out of my car, closed the door. I looked him in the eye. And I, I, he goes, I'm, I need some money. I go, I'm going to give you two bucks. And I, I don't know what you're going to use it for. But what's your plan? What's your future going to look like? He goes, oh, oh, what, what, what? I go, your future. I don't know what you're going to use the money for, but I know this. You need some freedom. You need Jesus. I told him just like, you need Jesus. Have you ever tried Jesus? I look around now. You need Jesus. It's dark. It's... He goes, well, I think I tried Jesus. No, you didn't. Like, you didn't try Jesus. And he started making it stuff. My mom died, this, that. I know you have a story. I go, but it wasn't God that killed your mama. All the violence and the pain that you went through and the addiction that you have right now, God has nothing to do with causing that. He's your answer. He's your solution. He's not your problem. Come on, Rock. His name's Rocco. Come on, Rocco. I'm here all the way from California and you're meeting me in a dark parking lot. God must want to reach you, Rocco, right here. I go, Rocco, you need Jesus. He goes, I do. I go, we're going to pray right now. Are you ready, Rocco? He goes, let's do it. And I prayed for Rocco. The Spirit of God touched him. He just started crying right there in the parking lot. I gave him my number. And I, tell, I gave him my number. And I tell you why I gave him my number. Because I planted a seed. And I go, Rocco, I'm going to do something for you. I go, right now, you need to get a little more desperate. But the seed's been planted tonight. But Rocco, you want to get off these streets? I'll get a jumbo jet to pick you up, 747. We'll get you a ticket and we'll fly you all the way to San Bernardino and we'll get you in our men's home. Come on, we'll get you off the streets. And if it doesn't work there, I'll we'll find you a place here. But this is what I'm saying. We have revival and the power of God to transform lives. Give God one more praise. See, the purpose of being filled and in filled with the presence and power of God is to overflow. We don't keep revival in the church. We start the fire in the church and then we spread it once we leave this place. And the reason you need to get your shout back because you need to get your boldness back. The devil's bold. It's time for the church, come on, to be bolder than anything the enemy's doing. This is where we're at. I'm going to tell you, there's a fight. And the devil's recruiting your little kids and little, your little boys and little girls. I went to watch the Immortals or Eternals or whatever junk movie the other day. I don't, has, has anybody seen the Eternals? Don't go watch it. It's dumb. It was my daughter's birthday. She wanted to go see a movie. I go, Eternal sounds good. It sounds spiritual. God wants to give you eternal life, you know, something like that. But I had to walk out. I walked out with my daughter. We're out. We're Audi 5000. Out. Because they had some scenes in there that they were promoting lust. They were promoting fornication. They were promoting homosexuality. They were promoting all that stuff. And I, I'm not going to sit there and start a soul time my daughter. And all of a sudden, she's struggling with a spirit that I agree with in a movie. So I go, baby, let's get out of here. We're going to go praise God, have some lunch, dinner, but we're going to stay here and agree with what the devil is doing. Come on. God wants a church that's on fire, that's holy, and says, I'm no longer compromising. I'm all in. Give God one more praise if you're in. Lord, we glorify you. Oh, Rabbi we praise you, Jesus. You're worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Have your way tonight. You don't need a lot of time to speak to us because we're ready to get our shout back, identity back. 
we are end time warriors in these last days and we will resist Satan with the power of the Holy Spirit not by my door by power but by my spirit saith the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen hallelujah let's go through some someone say word we used to say that in the in the 80s or we go word what's up word we used to also say word up <laughs> but your praise is a weapon someone say my praise is a weapon The word is a weapon. Say it with me. The word is a weapon. Because the word is truth. And what we're fighting with is a lot of deception, depression, intimidation. And if we don't watch it, we're more interested in pleasing people and fitting in than pleasing God and being a world changer. We're in a battle. And if you don't know the word of God, you're going to be deceived. Some of us are being pastored by CNN and Fox News. You're not being pastored by the word of God. And I can tell the word of God's not coming out of your mouth. Fear's coming out of your mouth. Doubt is coming out of your mouth. Circumstances coming out of your mouth. But we got to start getting the word of God back in our mouths. And we got to get our shout back. And we got to get in our homes. The other day, I go, Lisa, I go, let's go in the room. Let's go in our prayer closet together. I go, if even, even if for 10 minutes, let's do 10 minutes. Well, 10 minutes turned into an hour. And we began to praise God, worship God, pray in the spirit. And as we're praying and we're saying hallelujah, and we're saying praise God, and we're saying God is good, and we're proclaiming God is almighty. And I go, Lisa, let's get a little louder right now. Come on, let's shake these walls a little bit. Who cares? Come on, there's neighbors that are fighting. I can hear them. But right now we're fighting in the spirit, and it's okay if we rattle these walls a little bit. It's time to raise our voice. Let's get our shout back. And you know what was happening? Atmosphere was changing. Because it was, someone say authority. Someone say authority. When you're shouting, you know what you're speaking with? Authority. Someone say authority. The devil has some of you whispering when you should be shouting. And even right now when I'm talking about shouting, there's something telling you that's not you. That's not me. I'm more conservative. You know what, what the real problem is? You're not desperate enough. So let's talk about shouting for a minute. Why shout? One of the reasons we shout, we shout for victory. It's an act of war. We will not see the power, I want you to get this, of God released in a dead atmosphere that has no passionate praise. After the shout comes, a release of God's power follows. After the shout comes, a release of God's power, what? Follows. So me and Lisa prayed, less than 24 hours later, both of my daughters come from upstairs and they say, Daddy, one of, one of them said, Dad, last night I had a dream. And I had a dream that I was in a jail. And while I was in that jail, I was in a room, this jail had a whole bunch of cots, a whole bunch of beds, and I was in one of them. And she said, but I could feel there was somebody in another bunk that had a problem with me. And this, finally, I, I, stood, I, sit, I sat up and this girl comes to my face and tells me, you better stop it, stop it. Stop it! And she said, Dad, in that dream, what I did was I grabbed her by the face like this, not mean, not like. I grabbed her by the face and I said, and I, I rebuke, I go, I rebuke this spirit right now in the name of Jesus. You gotta go! 
And she said, it left. She goes, and then I woke up this morning. She said, my daughter, it's the same daughter. She goes, I began to pray. And I started speaking in tongues. And then I got interpretation. This is what God told me. My other girl follows. She comes down. And she goes, Dad, I had, a, I had, I had an encounter with God last night. As I began to pray in the spirit, God began to speak through me. And I got an interpretation of what God was saying. What was happening, I told my daughter, you were in a jail. And the thing that was holding you back is telling you to stop it. Because you've chosen sides. You've made up your mind you're going to serve God. And the, the enemy is mad and he's telling you, stop praising. Stop glorifying God. Stop speaking the word of God. Stop it. Within 24 hours or less, there's an invasion in my house of the presence of God because we began to shout. Come on, say shout. Some of us are more concerned what your kids are going to think. Who cares? They already think you're crazy. Let them get some verification of it. And this is the point. First shout, then victory. Say it with me. First shout, then And Joshua 6, 20, look at this. It says, so the people shouted. What the people do? When the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted, say it again, the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. First the shout, then the wall falls down, then we take a city. There's going to be no advancement until we have a church that knows how to go to war. Now, they blew the trumpet because when they blew the trumpet, they were literally declaring war. Back in those days, they would blow the trumpet, and this was the instructions, when the trumpet is blown, shout, and God will give you the city. There's some victories that God right now wants to give you, but you got to give a sacrifice, come on, a faith shout. There's some walls that, been, that are up that have been telling you you can't enter. You're not coming in here. You're going to have to stay on the outside. That's for somebody else. It's not for you. And God is saying, it's for you. It's time to, come on, it's time to get your freedom back, your peace back, your joy back, your confidence back, your family back, come on, your ministry back, your, your, oh, I say, your faith back. So they shouted. And then what happened? The walls came down. There's some things that have been up in your life for years. And God is saying, you're one shout away from your victory. God, see, God's not, God is saying this. You're not shouting for the sake of shouting. You're shouting because you know something. You're shouting because I gave you a word. You're shouting because I gave you a promise. And you're shouting. The reason you're shouting is because I told you when you shout, I'm going to make sure those walls come down and I'm going to give you the city. This year, God's going to give us San Bernardino. You got to say enough's enough. You're not going to have my kids no more. Not on my watch. A matter of fact, we're going we're gonna to live holy. We're, gonna, we're, we're not only going to shout, we're going to live this thing. We're going to raise our standard of living. We're going to watch what input we allow into our lives. You got to see, some of us have no shout. And I'll tell you why. Because your mind is fleshly. 
When I say fleshly is what I mean by that. You're contaminated by the world. And if you're contaminated by the world, you can't shout for Jesus. You lost your shout on a YouTube video in the music you're listening to. Say, Pastor, how you live? Well, you, you don't want to know my standard because I just don't play. I don't drink a little bit. I don't need a beer once in a while, a cold one. Well, I do, Pastor. Why? What well, Jesus drank, why, why are you using scripture to justify your drinking? All I know is this, I got to set people free from drinking and I can't be playing with something that has chains attached to it. Come on, get your shout back. Come on, get your shout back. The second thing, we shout because we're desperate for a touch of God. Is there anybody desperate for a touch of God? We shout because we're desperate for a touch of God. This is what scripture says here. In Matthew 20, 30, it says this. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. And I want you to put yourself in a position, you're blind. Last, the last scripture we're talking about, they're going to war. And they're, fi they're fighting against a... Uh, enemy that has fortified walls. Their walls were so thick that chariots would go on top of it and they were mocking anybody that would even try to get into that city. Nobody could get into Jericho, but God could. And now we have two men that are blind and they're most likely blind from birth. And this is what happens. They were sitting beside the road when they heard that Jesus was coming that way. So what they hear, Jesus coming my way. They couldn't see Jesus coming, but they heard that Jesus was coming. Now, there were other blind people and they probably heard the same thing, but they were not gonna get the same results. Everyone here has a need and there's a battle that you're fighting. But it doesn't mean that everybody here is going to get a victory. Not because the victory is not in this room. It's because you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by. I don't need another Wednesday. I don't need another Sunday. Right now, if Jesus is in this room and the power of God is here, why would I have to wait another day? So as the scripture said, when they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting. They began what? They began what? Well, pastor, if I start shouting, I'm going to look kind of ridiculous. Okay, stay blind then. Stay with no revelation. Stay cold. Stay lukewarm. Stay with no fire. Stay with no authority. Instead of you casting out demons, welcome demons into your life and your family. Stay sick, stay defeated, stay confused, stay suicidal. Come on, or shout. Come on, or shout. Or shout. You know why you shout? Because it's not just a shout, it's a shout of faith. Because I'm shouting because I know Jesus has now walked in my way. And this, the one that created the heavens and the earth is walking my way. Come on. The one that raises the dead is walking my way. The one that gives life. Come on. Come on. Gives life is walking my way. The one that heals is walking my way. I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by. It's time for me to shout. They shout. Now, you got to be, see, you have to understand this. Some of you in this room, I'm going to say something that's cold-blooded. But some of you in this room are going to hell. If you die right now, you're, you're going to hell right now. And the Savior is giving you an opportunity. Well, you know, Pastor, what I'm really interested in, do you have any tacos out there? Because I'm hungry. 
And you know what that means? There's not an awareness of a moment. See, God works in ordinary times like this, and he does supernatural miracles. You don't need to leave here with a spirit of suicide on you. You don't need to leave here, come on, with hopelessness on you. You don't need to leave here with a situation so big. You say, man, this mountain is so big. No, it's time for you to start shouting and speaking to that mountain and say, today is my day of change. Let's finish this. When they heard that Jesus was coming, they began what? Shouting. They began what? Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. You know what? People probably thought they're obnoxious. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Ushers, take them out. They're messing up our flow. There's some churches right now, if you begin to shout, they'll usher you right out. They're not aware of your problem. And if they usher you out there, God's going to usher you in here. Because we're going to welcome your shout. Come on, we're going to welcome your desperation. Because Jesus is here to help you. But do you want it? You know what they're saying when you're shouting? I want a breakthrough. Look what it said. Now, this is crazy. Be quiet. The crowd yelled at them. Callate. Shut up. We're here to see Jesus, not you. Now, for some of us, if the crowd, I'm not talking about one person, the whole crowd told you to shut up. For some of us, you'd be like, I'm offended, I'm out. Or you just shut up and say, I'll never do that again. But these guys were desperate. Because when you're desperate for a touch of God, you're not into, you're not going to let being offended be your excuse. I'm not going to be offended out of my breakthrough. I want to get some sight. I've been blind since the day I was born. And there's one that gives sight to the blind. Come on. He gets hearing to the deaf and he's passing by. I got one shot to get his attention. Now, look what he says. Be quiet. But they only shouted louder. Oh, oh, so you think you're going to shut me up. You haven't even seen the decibels I got. The decibels I'm going to take this to, if you were annoyed with the past shout, you're going to be destroyed by my second shout. Jesus! Son of David! Could it be you're too dignified to get a breakthrough? You don't need all that shouting. Yes, you do. So they shout it louder. You're not going to stop me from getting my breakthrough. I'm here to get saved. I'm here to get set free. I've been dealing with this depression far too long. All I could see is my pain, my hurt, my past. I can't see a future. Tonight, I'm getting a new vision. Tonight, I'm getting a new dream. Tonight, I'm getting my breakthrough from being my family. I'm done. Is there anybody desperate in this house? Give God just one more shout. Give God one more shout. Come on. If you need a breakthrough, put, come on, assign your shout to a situation. Now, I need a touch of God. I need a touch of God. That's it. All right, hold on, hold on. We're just going to finish this story. We're going to finish the story. So they only shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. But they screamed that. When Jesus heard them, when Jesus heard them, he stopped and called. 
What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. We've been blind since birth. And we heard that you give sight to the blind. We want to see. And Jesus felt sorry for them. He didn't get offended by them. He didn't say, hey guys, calm down. Calmate. Callate. Keep the decibels down. We're dignified around here. Do you know who you're speaking to? The Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus is not offended by your shouts. He's attracted to your shout. And then he said, he touched their eyes. They're desperate for a touch of God. Instantly, they could see. And they followed him. You know what comes after a shout? Victory. You know what comes after a shout? Breakthrough. You know what comes after a shout? Strongholds get torn down and enemies get defeated. You know what comes after a shout? Advancement. You know what comes out? Come on. After a shout? Joy. You know what comes after a shout? Come on. A turnaround. We know what comes after a shout? Freedom. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take this shout home. Not arguing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the spirit. There's some things that you've been fighting that you're not going to defeat until your praise and your worship becomes more passionate. When we come into this house, let there be a war, a war cry every time we come in. We are here to seek after the presence of God and we will not allow, we will not allow the world to outshout us. Let me show you a video real quick. Do you have that video? Okay, this is an event. I don't even know if this is a video, but this is an event. They want the guy to come out again and do an encore performance in some country. But look at him. I don't know what they're saying. It sounds like saying Milo. But I know they're saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. They keep going and they're not stopping till little Milo comes out. And some of you right now, you got to get your shout back and you got to get your praise back. Come on. And you're not stopping until, come on, you get a touch of Jesus Christ. Let's stand up. Come on. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Come on. Let's stand up. Let's give God a standing ovation. Come on. There's a victory happening right now. They have, they have no problem shouting for Milo. Milo, Milo, Milo. You know what they were saying? Come on, heaven right now. It's so. This is what I'm going to tell you. I'm teaching you guys how to fight. We're going to get some prophetic, strong prayer in our homes now. This is going to be an overflow of your personal life. We're going to come here overflowing into the house of God and then overflowing into the streets. You're no longer, I'm, the, I'm prophesying over you, you're no longer going to be struggling with that sin anymore. Because the walls are coming down tonight. Come on, your walls are coming down. And you're not going to stop shouting.
You're gonna get. You're gonna keep on praising until Jesus come back. You're gonna keep on shouting until Jesus come back. Because every day I need a touch of God. Every day I'm desperate for God. Every day there's things that I can't handle, but He can handle. If you feel like COVID, like COVID coming upon you, you resist that thing. Don't you? Oh my gosh, baby, I'm gonna I'm die. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna start preaching in Spanish when I'm telling a little more Spanish. But I'm gonna die. No, you don't. No, you say, in the name of Jesus, I resist this spirit of COVID. I serve a God, and his name is Jesus, and by his stripes I'm healed. I command you in the... You start speaking like that, things are going to start running. All I'm saying is, you got to be careful you're not welcoming what you should be resisting. Amen. I'm not going down like that anymore. I, mean, I feel like getting high again. No, I'm not feeling like getting high. I feel like praising God again. Right now, I feel a little weak. I need to get back in the presence of God. I need to give God a, a bigger shout than I've ever given him. Okay. Okay, come on. One more praise to God. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a call. Jesus is walking by. A matter of fact, his angels are here. Because when Jesus shows up, he shows up with an entourage. And he's looking. And he's saying this, everything I, you need is right here. And if you want it, the power is here to help you. When we're talking about being saved, some of the stuff we need to get saved from is not only addiction. You got to get saved from your past. You got to get saved from your thinking. You got to get saved from your pain. The power to save you and heal you is here tonight. I'm not offering you a religion. What I'm offering you is a touch from Jesus Christ. And if right now you're saying, Pastor, I'm desperate for change. And right now I need change and I didn't come here to just hang out and go through another service. Some of you need to give up your offense. You got offended and you got to let that go so you can get your breakthrough. You got to shout that thing out of your life. You got to shout the depression out of your life. You got to shout the addiction out of your life. And say, tonight I'm getting mine. I'm like those blind, blind men. I want my victory. Now if you're saying that, that you want change tonight. You want an invasion of God's presence in your life. You, tonight is a night you're gonna turn your page. A page is gonna be turned. You're gonna step out in boldness. I want you to leave your seat and come up here. All I'm saying, at the opportunity, two men walked out of their seat and they came up and they got their sight back. Someone's gonna get, come on, someone's gonna get their joy back. Someone's gonna get their freedom back. Someone's gonna come up. Someone's gonna get their ministry back. Someone's gonna hear God. God's gonna restore you. Come on, come up, come up, come up tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, there we go. Okay.
Serena, you're up here. Are you ready to surrender everything to Jesus, honey? Come on. We love you. We're so glad you're here. You know what Serena's done? She heard from God and she's taking action. Come on. Yeah. Let's give her some praise. Come on. Come on. Let's give God some praise for her. We welcome. We love her. Now, I want you to get this. We're not coming up here to remain the same. We're coming up here to get a touch of God. That the change would be so drastic. It would be like, I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I hear. I was dead, but I'm alive now. I'm going to give one more opportunity because I believe there is still someone that needs to be up here. And I'll say, the reason I'm saying that, because you, 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 been, you know this, I need some change. Someone say, I need some change. And, and if, today were your, if today were your last day on earth, you're not even sure you have a relationship with God. And I tell you, you don't need another joint. You don't need that girlfriend to come back in your life or a boyfriend. What you need is Jesus. Well, I was, I'm going to give one more opportunity because there's somebody, and when I'm speaking, I want you to come up here and say, that's me. I know I need change right now, and I feel God speaking to me. Tonight's my night. Okay? I want you to come up. Come on. They're still coming. We're going to end it right now, but I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Okay, now. While I was in Arizona, I went to get my hair cut. And you guys could see that. There was a young lady that cut my hair. Her name's Lorena. I go, Lorena. I, and, I, and I prayed when I sat in the chair. I go, Lord, help me speak to Lorena about you. Well, she spoke. And she says, what are you doing, what are you doing here in Arizona? I go, I'm glad you asked. I go, I'm here on a church conference. And then I ask her quickly. I go, Lorena, do you go to church? And she goes, I go to Catholic church. And I go, Lorena, why do you go to church for? Why do you go to Catholic church for? And she said this, I want to go to heaven. And you know what I said, Lorena? I go, Lorena, that's a great answer. That's good. The reason you go to church is because you want to go to heaven. And I asked Lorena, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? And Lorena says, I don't know. I go, so you don't know. You're going to church, but you don't know if you die right now, you go to heaven. And I go, Lorena, if I die right now, I'm going to heaven. And I go, would you like to be sure like me? She goes, are you that sure? I go, I'm 100% sure. I go, would you like to be sure like me? She goes, yeah. And when I'm speaking to her, she just starts crying in the, in the shop, just bawling. Ah! I go, Lorena, the reason I'm sure and the reason you're not sure, the reason you're not sure is because you believe the only way you're going to get to heaven if you are good enough. Wow. But I'm going to tell you, Lorena, you're never going to be good enough. But you need a savior. And the Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved at the moment. They call on Jesus to save him and he gives them eternal life at that moment. So I had an opportunity to share Christ with her. And all I'm saying, tonight you're not a salvation. You're not going to go to heaven because you're a good enough person. You're going to go to heaven because Jesus saved you. And there's only one name to call on to be saved and it's the name of Jesus. Come on, let him make you whole. Let him set you free. Let him give you eternal life. Let's pray. Okay. Are you ready, honey? What's your name? Francine? We're ready. Are you ready? Ready? All right. No more fear. It's love. Okay? God loves you so much. He loves you. And I'm going I'm to pray to get peace in your, in your soul and even good night sleeps. It's, oh, man, so, I rested so well last night. God loves you so much, honey. I'm so proud of you. What's your name? Kim. Let's give Kim a hand. I'm so proud that you're here, Kim. We love you so much. <laughs> proud of you, okay? Let, let's pray together. Let's pray. We're going to pray, and God's going to answer your prayer. We're going to pray, and God's going to answer your prayer. I don't know what you need, but God knows what you need. You tell God what you need, but pray with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. 
I thank you for giving me this opportunity to cry out to you for my salvation, freedom, breakthrough. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross to pay the price for my sins. And tonight, I'm asking for your freedom, your forgiveness, and the gift of eternal life. Jesus, you're my savior. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my source of joy and peace. And from this day forward, just like the blind men, I will follow you for the rest of my life. Make me a new person. I turn away from my whole life to follow you. Set me free from all pain, hurt, abuse, and make me new. Jesus, you're my savior. I'm safe and I'm saved. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give God just one more. Come on, one more praise. We're going to pray with you. God bless you. This Sunday, you don't want to miss it.